So Demon's Souls is admittedly the game I have the least time with. I have not swung every single weapon in this game. I have not cast every spell. I was not there <coughs> when it was more active. But I have looked up all the things that I believe I need to know about the game in order to understand it a little bit better. And I have found out a few things I did not exactly know. But I have glanced over in the past when deciding how to create characters for myself, and I have learned quite a few things by watching other players. I have also, as you have seen in previous videos, played a little bit of the remake, and I have actually been a part of the final moments of the original Demon Souls. So I do know a few things. I do know that I did not enjoy the original Demon Souls immediately anyway, because True to how it was, uh, people could just instantly heal back to full health whenever I did not manage to finish them off, so... <laughs> I You have to run a one-shot build or else you're gonna have a bad time. <clears throat> At least in the past. In the present, you might be a little more capable against people who don't really know what they're doing and don't have a whole ton of extremely powerful healing items, you can still get away with it if you're more aggressive, and I learned how to do that very quickly. <clears throat> I had a uh, very effective weapon, but moving on, the general idea of Demon Souls, your health, is somewhat difficult to keep, which is to say you will be taking a lot of damage, and at the same time the game will be trying to take it away from you whenever you mess up, um, because when you're in spirit form, as it says here, you will lose 50% of your health. <coughs> oh, this is bothering me. Um, you lose 50% of your health while in spirit form. This includes while you're an invader, as it says down here somewhere. Uh, one of This one right here where it says invaders. You lose 50% of your health. And then you'll lose even more health, depending on how close you are to black world and black character tendency. So the more people you kill, the, more, the closer you are to black character tendency, and so therefore you lose even more health. I believe it's another 5% for that, and then you lose another about 5%. It's more like 4.25. It gets down to like 40.25%. If your world is also in black world tendency, I don't know exactly how it works when you're in someone else's world. It might also depend on if, you're, if the uh, person you're invading is in black world tendency or not but you'll lose another percent amount of health based on that as well. You can get some of that health back, however, if you're wearing the Kling Ring. It's 40% of the lost health specifically because percentages in Demon Souls all work multiplicatively, so when you have the 60% uh, from the Marion Blade and 50% from the Clever Rat Ring, it actually becomes a 140% instead of a 110%, which is very strange. And I don't know the exact order that it multiplies in, so I cannot exactly tell you. You will have to test that out or look it up. It is good to get close to 50 vitality, however, and it also increases your item burden, which includes items that you will be holding in your inventory, such as um, healing items, which is healing grass, and you know consumables, such as thrown firebombs, and uh, I believe souls often have weight to them, so you should put your souls away. Um, arrows, arrows, and also all of the stuff you're not currently wearing. I don't remember exactly if wearing armor makes it so it doesn't add to your item burden instead of your equipment burden, because those are two completely different things, which is why I'm saying this. Your health, your vitality will increase your item burden. This will allow you to have buffs such as pine resins i don't know if they're still called that but that's what they i remember them as and fire bombs healing items those are all connected to your item burden healing items were not originally connected to your item burden i believe it might still have been but you can only carry a specific number of them and they have a lot more weight to them so you can't just have 99 dark moon grasses which you couldn't before unless you use the duplication which the duplication for these reasons is no longer a thing but it is also a little bit easier to get uh, the uh, other types of grass 
for that reason. But yes, healing is very complicated in Demon Souls. <laughs> and I believe it's also percentage based, but I'm not completely sure about that. I actually did not care to look that up because it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> um, intelligence determines magic spell slots and maximum FP. Your intelligence here. It depends. So you're always going to need intelligence, which is fun. That's fun to think about. You know, you, you have to have intelligence. It's a very good idea. <laughs> um, because it raises your maximum FP. So if you want to use second chance, which you know you really want to, um, you need to have two spell slots. Uh, well, actually I believe it requires faith slots, which is a different thing entirely. Uh, your spell slots, you can have six of them. Um, you're going to automatically have two because you'll need 100 uh, focus points, I believe. Uh, oh, that's right, that's right. I needed to change this. I changed this in all the other ones, but it's actually MP. <clears throat> <clears throat> so your MP, which is determined by your intelligence stat over here, is increased every time you level it. Um, you need to get to 100 MP if you want to cast Second Chance, which you know you want to, so there is a couple of ways to go past that, such as the Silver Coronet or the Silver Catalyst, but it is recommended that instead you have it always available. However, it is not exactly easy to recast Second Chance. It does take a while, and there's no casting speed in Demon Souls, so you can't make it go by faster, and by then it would be a better idea to use Warding. But this is more... this is supposed to be a generalization. The problem is just that Second Chance is such a powerful tool. It is the general thing <clears throat> that you will be using in Demon Souls. So <laughs> it's important for me to tell you about Second Chance. So at levels of 10, 14, 18, 24, 30, and 40 intelligence, you will get one spell slot. You can have up to six, and then you can also add more using rings, I believe. I do not know exactly how many more, but there are a couple of rings. One of them is the Ring of Magical something. I think it's nature that gives you more ring slots. Let's find out. Uh, yes. Maybe? Yes, because normally you would have one at ten, so now we have two. So yeah, the Ring of Magical Nature is the one that gives you one more ring slot. <clears throat> As you can see now, we don't have any. We don't have any spell slots, or magic slots. <sighs> and then there's the ring of, uh... Something about prayer. Devout prayer. Devout prayer gives you another spell slot. So you can do that instead. If you really wanted to, it's taking up a ring slot, and your ring slots are very important, but... Moving on, endurance increases stamina and maximum equipment load, so get as much as needed to wear and wield equipment. You can feel like this works a lot like Bloodborne does, where there isn't any poise. A lot of a couple of weapons have hyper armor, but other than that, there's no poise, so you can really just wear whatever you want. Defense still adds up, it's still a good idea, just like it is in Bloodborne, but in Demon's Souls it doesn't feel like it is because uh, everyone's just going to be one-shotting you anyway, and you can just put warding on, or you can use a shield, and then you can really just make up for whatever defense you're lacking, and there you go. <clears throat> um, but your stamina increases up to level 40, as it always does, which is cool to know, because Demon Souls was first, and anything that Demon Souls says is a thing, that has continued to be a thing, means that they thought it was a good idea in the very first game, so... It's cool to see that. Uh, endurance continues to be up to level 40, and that's a good idea, but you still don't really need that much endurance. Which is a little weird because in Dark Souls 1 you really did, but that was probably because of poise, but getting ahead of myself, we're moving on to strength and dexterity, which increase your physical damage and soft cap up to 50, which is not a thing in the other games for the most part, and dexterity also lowers fall damage a little bit, which in Demon's Souls you don't really take a whole lot of fall damage, you either take a... you either die or you barely get tickled, so... Your dexterity lowers how much of that tickle that you would have taken, so it really isn't important for that. It's mainly for the soft caps, up to 50. It's not up to 40, it's up to 50. It's also that way for magic damage and faith damage, so everything except for luck goes up to 50 instead of 40. <clears throat> and in fact, 
every single stat on here except for luck and endurance goes up to 50. So that's pretty cool. But we also have magic, which raises magic damage with the soft capped up to level 50. Also, I forgot to mention for strength, I forgot to put it on here. It does still get that two handing bonus of 1.5. It's not two. Not two times like it is in Dark Souls 2, it's still 1.5 like it is in every other game. I don't know why they did that for Dark Souls 2, it's probably for the power stancing. I mentioned that in the Dark Souls 2 video, but it is its own thing, it's cool. I'm alright with that, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, the Faith, the Magic, Magic only raises magic damage, doesn't do anything else. So if you're a magic build, that sucks, because you're already leveling intelligence so you can use MP, but your Faith build... Faith increases miracle slots, and it also raises your faith power up to level 50, and it also raises your magic defense, and as I said, it gives you faith slots, but you only get four of them. You cannot have more than four faith slots, so you will not be able to use every single miracle in the entire game, but you will be able to use four faith slots up to level 36 at 10, 16, 24, and 36, which is interesting because it's multiples of eight, and that's kind of cool, but... Um, faith is just really strong because of that. However, there's only one There's only one miracle that does faith damage and that is God's wrath and Everything else is just kind of a supporting thing. So you really don't need everything You don't need to use every single faith thing But of course if you're using a weapon that has faith scaling you will want to get it up to 50 levels anyway and this will also significantly increase your magic defense which is nice because then you are really an anti-magic build and that's pretty cool um your luck stat however the only reason it's on here is because one weapon in the game scales with your luck stat and that is the blue blood blade which people do indeed like to use because of how strong it is it in fact scales with pretty much everything and you can buff it it's just a very strong weapon, but you have to make a build specifically for it because it has a very high stat requirement in everything, including strength, dexterity, in um, magic, and faith. <laughs> I have to stop myself because there's intelligence and also magic. So it does not scale with your intelligence. It scales with magic and also faith. It's a very good weapon, though. It also scales with luck up to level 30. I think. I'm pretty sure that's like the soft cap. For all of these numbers where I'm telling you get it up to this amount, these are soft caps. After this, it starts slowing down. Except for endurance, endurance stops at 40. You do not get more endurance after level 40. And this is typically true for every game except for I think Dark Souls 2. And, and maybe Elden Ring? But most of the other ones, not so much. But anyway... Most weapons have set infusion paths, including Quality, Crushing, Sharp, Dragon, Tearing, Mercury, Fatal, Moon, Crescent, Blessed, Sticky, and Dark. And so what that means is a lot of these weapons do not have the ability to go into every single one of these infusions. So they have set infusion paths, and sometimes you just don't want to infuse them. So you can just upgrade them normally, and they'll be a little bit better for your build. Most of the time, crushing is for strength, sharp is for dexterity, quality is for both of those, and it always tries to balance them out, which is probably why it's better than refined is in later games and the quality infusions in later games. They actually had to nerf it, though, but that's a different thing entirely. Um, dragon adds fire. Tearing adds blood buildup, buildup not loss. Uh, mercury adds poison buildup. Fatal actually increases the critical damage of the weapon. So if you do a backstab or a repost with it, uh, Moon adds magic damage. Crescent also adds magic damage, but it also adds mana point regeneration to the weapon. And Blessed also adds magic damage, but it also adds health point regeneration to the weapon. And then Sticky, also Blessed, is faith scaling, and Crescent and Moon are magic scaling. And Sticky changes a bow specifically into dexterity scaling. Instead of normally its strength and a little bit of dexterity, it is full into dexterity with Sticky. And then there's Dark scaling which dark can be applied to shields to give them higher magic defense. 
at the cost of everything else. So, not really a good idea to infuse them with magic or with dark because it will lower their stability. And stability is really the main reason to use shields in the first place, but you, you never know. I, I'm not sure if it lowers the physical defense like it normally does. It might just straight up add magic defense and lower the stability, and in Demon Souls you can probably still block with a weapon pretty well. I'm not sure. I would have to check. But it's probably not a good idea to infuse it with dark. It's probably better to just upgrade it naturally and then block with the shield if you're even going to be doing that. You know, you might just want a shield for parrying, you might want it for um, regeneration. There's only one that does that, but still. <clears throat> so as I said, sticky is only for bows, dark is only for shields, crescent and blessed give you health and... Okay, again, I put FP here because I was stuck in that. It's MP. Regeneration and also add magic damage and one gives you faith and one gives you magic scaling Moon adds magic damage fatal adds critical all the things I said just a moment ago dragon adds fire crushing adds strength sharp adds Dexterity and quality actually balances strength and dexterity scaling so players can have their soul level lowered by the soul sucker magic This will not lower their vitality level. So once you've leveled up into health you have a higher vitality level. You cannot go back down. So, yes, you can lose levels. However, you cannot go lower than your vitality level. <clears throat> your vitality level will never go down. So once you have committed to a specific level, you cannot go lower in vitality. You will be stuck at that soul level forever, and there's nothing you can do about it. So if you do actually want to increase your health, you are not trying to <clears throat> make a invader who is actually trying to defeat people, then like maybe you don't have second chance going, I don't know. I'm just warning you right now, you cannot lower your vitality. <laughs> but if you really wanted to, you could change your character into different invasion pools by lowering their level with the help of another player. There are also two enemies in the game who can do this for you. One of them is, however, King Alant, the final boss. Well, not the final boss, but that is a spoiler. Anyway, um, <clears throat> there's also Mephisto. Mephisto, the character who gives you the foe's ring and a whole bunch of colorless demon souls and such when you uh, are a pure black character tendency she will spawn and then she will start giving you assignments telling you to kill people once she gets aggroed or once you finish her quest line and she gets aggroed she actually can use the soul sucker spell so if you didn't feel like getting a friend to do it for you or you don't have a friend to do it for you or don't feel like con inconveniencing your friends you could instead hope that the computer decides to use a soul sucker spell because they don't do it very often and it, if you're a very high level it's still gonna take a while to do but it's a lot easier than getting a lot to, to do it because a lot will also stab you through the chest and do a whole lot of damage so it's a lot easier to do with Mephisto especially since she shows up a lot sooner than he does so there you go um black character tendency and black world tendency as I said it lowers your maximum health this also applies to invaders so it's important to note this will apply to you when you're doing an invasion. You can avoid backstab damage by rolling. You can get hit before you can roll after a backstab repost in the remake. In the remake. I don't know exactly why this is. It could be because rolls have a bit of a startup to them instead of like frame one or four in vulnerability. But you can get hit immediately after a backstab if the opponent times it properly. So you cannot get out of the way of that. If your opponent uses the uh, sort of glitch where they parry you and then they get the repost, but also they cancel their own animation by doing a backstep, then uh, they can also use Soul Sucker in tandem with all of this if they are very good. If they time it properly, they can steal your soul level and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> but you would also have to mess up by getting parried, so... You'll have to be careful about all these things. It's just things to think about. Uh, moving on, we have daggers. Daggers are majorly dexterity scaling. They are very lightweight. 
They are best one-handed. They have somewhat farther reach two-handed. They can parry in the offhand. Again, I never really used weapons all that much in Demon's Souls, so daggers are not one of the things I've swung around all that much. I specifically had to boot up the game just to get a look at them, but they ha are definitely more of an offhand weapon. If you wanted to use them as their own sort of weapon thing, you'd have to use them in your, your main hand. They can be pretty good for doing backstabs and reposts, as it says here. Um, they're mainly used for their regenerative infusions, because I've never seen someone using one in the main hand. I believe that rapiers are better for that, and so we'll get to that in a moment. Um, the baby's nail can inflict plague. The parrying dagger is naturally better at parrying. It even says this in the description. It usually does, but sometimes you have to specifically point it out, because it's not always true. But even in Elden Ring, it's still better at parrying than other things are, but I don't believe it is in Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 specifically, the parrying dagger is not amazing at parrying, but it could be. It could be. I would have to check again. Uh, the secret dagger has somewhat higher damage. It has higher, a bit higher scaling and a bit higher damage than the basic dagger does. There's really not too many choices here. You probably could still do well with the parrying dagger. But unfortunately, I don't believe the parrying dagger parries in the main hand. I might as well check that right now because I have the ability to do so and I already have it all running. Let's go ahead and grab that as soon as my television turns back on. Um, so the baby's nail is also, I believe, the heaviest dagger. And because it can inflict plague, you can use it... Uh, plague as it normally does. Uh, it works like toxic. It lowers the opponent's ability to regenerate their stamina. I'm just trying to tell you a bunch of nonsense so that I can quickly pick up the dagger and try to parry with it in the main hand, but uh, Baby's Nail, it has the ability to inflict plague and all that. So no, you cannot parry with the parrying dagger while it's in your main hand. You have to put it in your offhand, but it is better at parrying. Okay than uh, other daggers are. So that's important to note if you were thinking about trying that like I was just now. And moving on, we have straight sword. Scaling with decent dexterity scaling, which is to say they're quality weapons. They're probably the only weapon on here that I would straight say they are the quality weapon, because after a while I was looking at other selections, and it's mainly they lean towards one more than the other until you infuse them specifically with quality. But the straight swords, even more so, a little bit closer to quality weapons. Uh, they're normally lightweight, which is to say they have four or less units of weight to them, <clears throat> um, with one exception, or two exceptions really. Uh, they're best one-handed, but they're effective two-handed. They're very sim they're very interesting weapons. They have like the wide side-to-side -side swings. It gets a little closer when it's two-handed. Instead of being wide swings, it becomes more diagonal, so it's not as it's wide when you two-hand them, and instead their heavy attack becomes sweeping attacks, the wide sweeping attacks, like you have it with their light attacks when they're one-handed. But when you two-hand, when you're one-handing them and you do a heavy attack, you do a, a walk-forward stabbing attack. It's really the only one they have. Everything else is a sort of like uppercut from the rolling attack, side-to-side -side swing from the running attack. And I, I forgot to try the two-handed version of the running attack, but... Really, it's just the heavy attack that gives them a thrusting attack, and it's kind of slow. So I wouldn't say straight swords are all that great for their thrusting attacks, even though the game seems to think so. But it's very useful because it has a pretty basic moveset. Um, they're not as fast as other options, I believe, but they have much wider swings to them, so it's easier to hit with them. The Blue Blood Sword, which is the unique version, the one of the more unique weapons of the Straight Swords, scales with luck primarily, but it also scales with everything else, and it can be buff, oh, except for Dexterity now that I think about it. It definitely does not scale with Dexterity according to the wiki, and you can buff it, and it also has innate magic damage. It's just a very strong weapon if you can build around it because it has very high stat requirements including one in with 18 in dexterity, 18 in strength, 18 in magic, and 18 in faith. <laughs> 
So you really have to make a build specifically to use a blue blood sword. Um, the penetrating sword is the heaviest with stronger thrusting attacks. So if you want to do the heavy attack one-handed, it's better at that. But it's also not very good otherwise. Uh, compared to other straight swords, it's just not strong enough to make up for it being the heaviest one. The blue blood sword has five units of weight. The penetrating sword has six units of weight. All the other ones have... At most, three units of weight, I believe. The knight sword might be 3.5, and other ones are even lighter than that. But uh, the rune sword increases your magic defense with no downsides, and it has decent magic damage itself. Which is to say, it is a weapon with innate magic damage, and it's better for that purpose than as a physical weapon. Um, the Chris blade which for some reason was under uh, Curved Swords. It has a straight sword moveset, so I don't know why it's there. It's also listed as a straight sword. It's just, they put it on the Curved Sword uh, list on the wiki I was looking at, but the Chris Blade increases magic spell damage specifically. So specifically, not Wrath of Gods, only things like Soul Ray does not increase the magic damage of other weapons. It is specifically for spells that are considered magic spells and only the ones that do magic damage i don't think it increases fire damage like fireball but i might be wrong about that it specifically increases magic spells so. maybe it increases fireball i'm not sure uh it lowers your magic defense so if you were trying to resist magic this lowers your magic defense but Mainly because it boosts spell damage, it's a good choice if you're not doing a glass cannon build. There's also large swords. They're not great swords, they're called large swords. They oddly, most often, do not have scaling through typical stats, but those that do prefer strength a little bit more than dexterity. They are medium weight, as they always have been, which is to say they are about 6 units or less. And I believe they are actually less. They're most often five units or so. Um, they are better two-handed for the strength boost. Similar one-handed or two-handed. I believe they have exactly the same moveset, one-handed or two-handed. The difference being uh, the two-handed is obviously a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. Um, they're sometimes used for their longer reach and their high damage. And uh, noble, notable ones are the Claymore and its obvious uh, similar version that normally is better at slashing. The Claymore, however, does not have its signature thrusting attacks like it does in Dark Souls 1. Um, they have higher strength scaling, and you can infuse them, make them crushed or quality, and do, they'll do pretty well, while the Flamberge has higher dexterity scaling. I didn't check if you could make it sharp, but because it has higher dexterity scaling, you probably can. Um, but the Flamberge is better for dexterity as a large sword. It's not amazing, I would say. I think you have to farm it. I'm not sure about that. You could Maybe you can pur purchase it? I'm, I don't remember how you get the Flamberge. I know I have one, but I don't know where I got it. Uh, Demon Brant scales with white character tendency, while Soul Brant scales with black character tendency. So there's also a little bit of a, a shift between them. The Soul Brant actually has higher magic damage, and the Demon Brant actually has higher physical damage. And it, it, this is significant because... I believe Soul Brant is a little bit stronger, especially because as an invader you're going to be getting black character tendency a lot more easily. And as uh, Demon Brant scales with white character tendency, that means you have to be a host and you have to kill invaders. So it's a bit more difficult to get that, I believe. Especially since each time you lose, you will be uh, plummeting your world deeper into black world tendency. And so Demon Brant is a bit harder to use, but you can get it a lot sooner than you can get Soul Brant, so it's something to consider. Meanwhile, Northern Regalia is a little bit heavier, but it scales with both white and black character tendency, so you're probably just going to max out the black, char the black character tendency and not worry about it, because it can only do one at a time, and either way it gives you the full, the full bonus, the full benefit, I believe. It would be interesting if white's character tendency gave you more physical and black character tendency gave you more magical, but I don't think that's the case here. Um, it's probably supposed to be like white magic and black magic from uh, Final Fantasy, you know? 
Typically, black magic is more destructive, and white magic is more healing. It's supposed to be like miracles, and then, but I don't think that's what they ended up doing. I'm pretty sure either way, it's still going to get the bonuses. And Northern Regalia, Demon Brant, and Soul Brant, none of them scale with anything at all except for these things I just said. So you really don't need anything except for the stats to use them, and then you get the full benefit by reaching one of the character tendencies specific to the weapon. <laughs> The uh, Large Sword of Moonlight scales purely with faith. Which is weird, because it doesn't do that in any of the other games, but it ignores shields entirely with all of its attacks. You can still parry it, but if you try to block it with anything, it will just go straight through that. It will just hit the opponent for full damage, it'll be as if they got hit normally. Blocking, you cannot block the Large Sword of Moonlight. And because it scales with faith, it, uh, it's just very strong. <laughs> Uh, the Marion Blade boosts all damage by 60% while at or below 30% health. I uh, forgot this was a large sword, my, <laughs> to, just to say. I thought it was a straight sword, just like it is in all the other games, but... The, the Marion Sword started in Demon's Souls, so we'll have to say that it's originally a large sword. I don't believe it's such a great weapon by itself. I don't... I forgot to check that, honestly, but... Typically, it's not considered a very good weapon on its own. Uh, if you wanted to, you could get the 60% damage bonus and then go ham with it, but it's probably just not going to be as good as using it in conjunction with other things such as magic. Uh, the Storm Ruler will always cause flying knockdown on those hit by it, but it has no scaling, it has low damage, and it has low durability. So it's going to break, it's not going to kill anyone by hitting them, and it doesn't scale with anything, so you can't make it stronger. Uh, this, the Storm Ruler is typically used for the boss fight, you know, where it gets this significant bonus. It causes a massive shockwave. But if you use it outside of that, it will always cause flying knockdown. So it's a very useful tool for sending people flying away from you off of a cliff most of the time, but other than that, you can just continuously keep knocking them down, healing back up, knocking them down, healing back up, knocking them down. It's just, it becomes very stupid once people start doing this, and it's really just... It's, it's not... I don't know what to think about it, because it's just so stupid. But, uh, moving on, there's two very large swords in the game. They are both majorly strength scaling. They are both heavyweight, with one of them being 28 units and the other one being 10. Uh, they are better two-handed, but best to use the full moveset. This is because uh, they have a rolling one-handed attack that is faster than their rolling two-handed attack. However, when they are two-handed, it is a lot more difficult to interrupt their attacks because they have hyper armor more significantly than they do one-handed. But I believe the one-handed rolling attack actually does have hyper armor, and it causes flying knockdown with any of its swings. So any time you get a hit with a very large sword, it will cause flying knockdown, much like the Storm Ruler does in the previous large sword category. But they are mainly used for their massive damage and ability to send foes flying with wide swings, especially the two-handed running or one-handed rolling attacks. They have somewhat slow recovery, except for on the two-handed running attack. Two-handed running attack is specifically one of the better moves of the very large sword's moveset. Um, you can even initiate this off of a backstep, because there are no backstep attacks in Dark Souls 1, Demon Souls, or Dark Souls 2, or Dark Souls 3, now that I think about it. All of the Souls games. It's just Bloodborne and Elden Ring that added backstep attacks. Moving on, the Dragon Bone Smasher has high strength scaling, and it can be buffed with Cursed Weapon for massive damage output. Dragon Bone Smasher is a very popular weapon just because of how powerful it is. You can easily one-shot backstab or even one-shot running attack someone, and as I mentioned, the two-headed running attack is very good. So, Dragon Bone Smasher, very fun, very fun, just hit someone and they die. <laughs> but you have to run it on a strength build, or you just won't be able to use it at all, so. Definitely very effective with Cursed Weapon, because Cursed Weapon can increase the damage of a weapon by 50% pure physical damage, so it's just like, you have 700 damage because it's the Dragon Bone Smasher with really high strength scaling, and then suddenly you increase that by 0.5, and now it's like 1,050 damage, so 
you could very easily just destroy people with it, and it's main. It's one of the main reasons why second chance is so effective. It's such a good idea to have. Warding, however, is also a pretty significant buff. For a similar reason, it lowers physical damage by a significant amount. I believe it is 80%, so... 50% does not scale to 80%. All of that 1050 is going to do like 200 damage now, so... Warding is definitely a significant choice in the meta, just like uh, second chance is. But moving on, the Great Sword is the other weapon. It looks a lot like the Zweihander, not like the Great Sword that we see today, which looks a lot like a slab of metal, much like uh, Guts' sword from Berserk. But the Great Sword looks more like a Zweihander in Demon Souls, and it is the other option. It has a light weight, comparatively, of 10 units. And you can infuse it with more for more diversity, but it has exactly the same moveset, so... It's a pretty significant weapon, I would say. I specifically run one Blessed Infused on my Faith Strength build. Moving on, we have Curved Swords. Curved Swords are mainly Dexterity Scaling. They are normally very lightweight, that is to say the Large Sword of Searching is 8 units. Um, they are better two-handed for faster recovery. You can also parry with them in the offhand, much like you can with Daggers. They are fast weapons with greater dexterity scaling and innate bleed buildup. They are also particularly light. Um, the blind completely ignores shields, much like the large sword of moonlight does, and is almost entirely weightless with particularly high dexterity scaling. I don't believe it's a very strong weapon, but it's possible the dexterity scaling will significantly increase the damage. Perhaps I will try to get some kills with it in the future because it's a very unique sort of idea, because weapons do not ignore shields anymore to the extent they do in Demon Souls. Technically the shoulders heavy attacks do in Dark Souls 1, but not anything else, and in that game we also have poise. So. In Demon Souls we had weapons that just completely ignore shields, that's pretty cool. And I don't really want to do a, a cross souls with a Scraping Spears, because Scraping Spears very much, there's a good reason why they never did it again, so. <laughs> uh, the Large Sword of Searching increases item discovery, it has higher strength scaling, and it's also much longer and just as fast as other curved swords. So it can be a pretty significantly powerful curved sword weapon to use, despite the fact that it is tip supposed to be used for its item discovery, it is actually a pretty good curved sword just because it's longer and just as fast, and has higher strength scaling. So you can two-hand it, Still do pretty well with it. It does not, however, allow you to buff it, so... There's still some downsides. You might want to use a killage instead, but... The Shodel, however, we were talking about it earlier, ignores 50% of enemies' shield damage. So, if your Shodel actually has elemental damage on it, or anything, I guess, uh, all of its attacks ignore half of the opponent's shield, which is interesting, because we have the Blind over here, which completely ignores shields, but... The Shodel actually allows you to buff it and does the same, like, half of the same thing, so... You could use the Shodel and get, get past shields a little more effectively. I'm not sure. I'd actually have to think about it. The Blind completely ignores shields, or the Shodel ignoring half of them. Hmm. <laughs> it's an idea. But you can also buff the Shodel. Uh, Katanas. Katanas are mainly dexterity scaling. Between medium and lightweight. Which is, I say, uh, a lot of them are 5 units. One of them is 5.5, and one of them is 4.5. There's only 3, so... One is 4.5, one is 5, and one is 5.5, so between medium and lightweight. <laughs> uh, they are best used one-handed for their infinite combo potential with two katanas. You can also parry with one in the offhand. So, if you do a running attack, you can combo that into a shove, which is the forward kick animation, and then you can combo with the offhand katana. It specifically has to be an offhand katana, and I'm not sure if you can do it with anything else using a uh, different main hand weapon, because you need to have the katana shove. You definitely couldn't do it with like a, a very large sword, but you might be able to do it with a great, a, ver a large sword, not a very large sword. So. I'm not sure. I'm just interested in extending this with like, not just two katanas, you know. But uh, you can do running attack of a katana, or even just a light attack of a katana. And then you can do a shove with the katana, and then you can use the offhand katana to 
then go back into the shove and then use the offhand katana, shove, offhand katana, and it's just, it's an interesting idea. But you can get out of it because you can actually toggle escape in Demon Souls, so unless it's during the shove, you are going to get shoved. Um, you can just toggle escape the katana attack. Mainly these are used for their running attacks and otherwise their higher base damage. Um, so the Hiltless lowers health by 3%, when an attack connects. So the Hiltless is actually one of the stronger katanas, but because it lowers your health every time you hit someone, not completely sure about it being that great. Uh, the Makoto, Magical Sword Makoto, has particularly high bleed buildup and has no scaling whatsoever. This is probably why. I think you can upgrade it. I would have to check again. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, I kind of was just in disbelief, I guess, that you couldn't upgrade some things, but... Magical Sword Makoto has particularly high damage and all that, and I don't think it ha it has no scaling whatsoever, as I just said, but that's probably why. The Uchi Katana has no upsides or downsides, but you can buff it and or infuse it, which means the Uchi Katana is probably the better Katana out of all of these, specifically because it's not hurting you in any way, and you can actually have scaling with it, and you can buff it and all that. So if you want the optimal damage combo, with the infinite combo, uh, you can buff an Uchi Katana in your main hand so that when you shove enemies, it actually does the buffs damage to them. And then you can use Hiltless in your offhand because it has higher damage than the Makoto would. And the Makoto is constantly killing you. So. Also, I, I forgot to put that, but the Makoto is constantly doing 1% of your health as damage to you while you are holding it. Uh, rapiers. They are actually called rapiers in this game, not thrusting swords. Which is probably why I do that for some reason. I don't know why. I just, I prefer to just say rapiers. Because thrusting sword is so long. But anyway, uh, they are mainly dexterity scaling. They are very lightweight. Which is to say they are two units or less. Uh, they are best one-handed for less stamina consumption. But you can also use them behind shields or used in the offhand as a parrying tool. And using them with shields is definitely one of the stronger strategies in the game. They are mainly used alongside shields, and they're still particularly effective for criticals and thrust counters. So you could use this behind a shield and also for critical damage. <laughs> so you could backstab somebody and still do a significant amount of damage. It's crazy. Um, you could also use a spiral rapier, which is what I like to do. But first, let's talk about the epi rapier, which has innate fire damage that scales with intelligence. Rapiers cannot normally have fire damage, innate anyway, they can't be infused with dragon. You could buff them with uh, some black pine resin, but Epi Rapier can do all of that just naturally, so that can be fun. I don't think it's particularly optimal or useful, but it's something. Uh, the Needle of Eternal Agony is a rapier that is mainly used to obtain low effort souls. You get 20 souls per hit, so what you can do is you can actually just start swinging into the Maiden in black. And because she's immortal, she doesn't care, and she'll just start getting hit, and you'll be doing, like, barely any damage whatsoever, and you'll just keep getting 20 souls every time you do that. It's not a whole lot, but every now and then you might be like, well, I only need 100 souls, and I don't want to go out somewhere to, and get them that way, so. Needle of Eternal Agony is definitely a choice for that idea. It does not do anything else significant, it's just, it, it's really just for that idea. The Spiral Rapier, however, has innate bleed buildup, making it fun to use with the Mercury Infusion to also inflict poison. At least that's how I like to use it. It is actually a pretty strong Rapier by itself. You could probably put Fatal on it, and it will still do pretty well. It's just the idea that you can inflict poison and bleed at the same time was appealing to me at the time, and I thought, oh, that would be fun. So. Most people, however, will probably be running a Fatal S-Dock. Because the S-Dock is a strong... Uh, axes. Axes have very similar moves to straight swords, but they are mainly strength scaling, meaning you can two-hand them and use them to some pretty good effectiveness, but there's only two axes in the entire game, so... They're light or medium, being the Battle Axe being very light, I believe at like three units or so, and the Guillotine Axe being much heavier at like... 8, 7.5 units, I'm not sure, I'd have to look again, but they're pretty heavy. And the other one is not so heavy, so... 
They're better two-handed for the faster swings and the strength boost. They uh, have very similar movesets to straight swords, but instead of the thrusting attacks, they have this giant chop swing and what when one-handed anyway, and uh, they have higher strength scaling. It's pretty basic, but axes can actually be upgraded and infused, unlike hammers, apparently. I, I think hammers themselves might be able to be infused, but large hammers cannot for some reason. And we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, large axes, however, are mainly strength scaling, mainly heavyweight, and best two-handed for the strength bonus. They are mainly used for the high damage and rolling attacks. However, I believe... No, you can. You can infuse and buff them. I, I had to check that because... I had to uh, do a video on the crescent axes at one point, and I know that mine was crushing, so... The crescent axe is the lightest, and it can be infused or buffed. And or buffed. Not, not or buffed, it's and or buffed. So, very useful for, uh, you know, the, the bit of hyper armor. They actually have similar movesets to uh, very large swords, especially when one-handed. I'd have to check again for the two-handed, I'm not sure about that. Um, the Dozer Axe is the heaviest. I believe it's like 28 units. I, I might be wrong about that. It's probably like 16. But it's... It's the heaviest axe, the heaviest large axe, and it has no scalings, and you can still buff it though, so you could put Cursed Weapon on it, but it's just, it's not all that great, not all that great, it's better early on. I don't know if you can upgrade it, and honestly I'm quite confused as to what can and can't be upgraded, so. Uh, the Great Axe is somewhat heavier and therefore a bit stronger while still being able to be infused dash buffed, but it's very similar to the other large axes. The Crescent Axe is 7 units, the Great Axe is 10 units, so if you wanted to use one, these are your choices and there's not really any other ones. The hammers, hammers are mainly strength or dexterity scaling. <sighs> Which, uh, they're very lightweight, so they are four units or less. They're best two-handed for the strength boost, and they're entirely similar to axes and moveset, with blunt or piercing damage types. So axes do normal damage type, not slashing, so some of their moves are... Just weird. Uh, hammers instead do blunt or piercing damage, depending on which one you're using. There's a few choices. Uh, club. The club is the lightest. I believe it's even like three units. I'd have to check. They're, they're lightweight, so the club might be even lighter than that. It could be like one unit for all I know. I'd have to check. And we can't check over here, I'm sorry. <laughs> but... It scales much harder with strength. It has a B scaling in strength. And because it's a club, it might not be able to be upgraded. But I'm not sure about that. Uh, the Morning Star also inflicts bleed. And the Pickaxe and War Pick have piercing damage type and higher dexterity scaling. Making them ideal for counter hits. I'm not sure if you can make them sharp. We can actually check that real quick. Test. Test. Check. Yeah, so you can't make them crushing. You can actually make them sharp. So most of the time, when something does uh, thrust piercing damage or it naturally has higher dexterity scaling, you can make it lean even harder into dexterity as a sharp weapon, or you can make it lean back into strength, make it a quality weapon. And then you can also put tearing on it, which is pretty cool. Because normally you can't put blood buildup on, uh, bleed buildup on a, uh, a hammer. Like, let's put the, the Morning Star in real quick. So the Morning Star, you could probably put Crushing on it, yep, instead of Sharp. And you can't put Mercury or Tearing on it. It's just, when something is a strength weapon, you usually can't put status effects on it. So the Pickaxe and War Pick have uh, Piercing damage, which is Thrust damage most of the time, and uh, that makes it good for counter hit damage. They're also dexterity scaling, that's cool. But large hammers cannot be upgraded. So, I don't know... It's weird. Uh, the Brammed technically can be upgraded, but it doesn't actually get stronger when you upgrade it. 
Instead, that just increases its plague and poison resistance. I actually looked that up because when I found large hammers and I started looking at them, I realized you cannot upgrade these. What's the deal? So I looked it up and I saw the Bram is not getting any benefits from that. So I'm like, does the Bram benefit from, like, can you buff it? And they're like, apparently you can buff it. But it really just isn't all that great unless like you buff it. I'm, it's still not that great. It's like incredibly heavy. I'm pretty sure it has like 36 units of weight. But anyway, large hammers are majorly strength scaling. They're medium to heavy weight, which is the Great Club it has 5 units of weight to it. The Meat Cleaver, I believe, was 10, and the Bram was 38 or so. 36, 38, I'm not sure. They're best two-handed for the strength boost because of how much strength scaling they have. And they're sometimes used for the rolling attacks and high damage, and you cannot upgrade them. So, the Brammed is incredibly heavy. It has high damage at 210, and it does not get stronger with upgrades. At least, I believe it was 210. Okay, it does have strength scaling, though a B in strength scaling, so it still gets that benefit. But it's still not an amazing weapon, I would say. You can also buff it. So if you really wanted to, you could put, like, Curse Weapon on the brand, make it very intimidating, very big bonk build. But I still don't think it's that great. The Great Club is much lighter with higher strength scaling, as in it has an A over Bram's B, but it cannot be upgraded. The Meat Cleaver, however, has many things going for it. It has incredibly high scaling in Strength and Dexterity, an S scaling in Strength and Dexterity, and an A scaling in Faith. It has a very high Faith scaling as an A. It has innate magic damage, and you can also buff it. So you can slap on Cursed Weapon to get some Strength and Dexterity even higher for the physical damage, or you could slap on Light Weapon and get that magic damage going. But with uh, so many people running... Magic defense up, and magic defense down, you know, <laughs> because if they want to run a magic build, it also lowers their magic defense. It can be a little iffy if magic is actually the way to go for it, but the fact remains, you can buff it, make it way stronger, it restores health slightly with each hit, and you cannot upgrade it, much like any of the other ones. So, the meat cleaver just has a lot going for it compared to the other hammers. It's just a very powerful weapon, I would say. It apparently used to have more scaling to it, and they actually had to nerf it because of how good it was, so if that doesn't say how strong it is, I don't know what will, but moving on, we have fist weapons, which are mainly strength scaling. They normally are very lightweight, that is to say the hands of God have five units of weight to them, and the other ones do not, they have like one unit, if, if any. <laughs> they must be one-handed, you cannot two-hand your fists. Um, and they're rarely used except with the infinite headbutt combo, especially when paired with buffs. Some people like to use the Hands of God to have fun, but this is especially the more powerful way to use them. Um, the Claws have higher dexterity scaling and can notably be infused with sharp, mercury, and bleeding. So whenever something has higher dexterity scaling, you can also infuse it with sharp, mercury, and bleed. As I pointed out earlier with the pickaxe and the uh, war pick. The Hands of God cannot be infused or buffed or whatever. Like, no, you can't buff them. And they cause knockdown on running attacks and heavy attacks. They also have innate magic damage that scales with faith. They're pretty fun weapons. You can do the running attack and just clock someone's noggin, send them flying into the next Tuesday. It's pretty cool. Um, they have some pretty high requirements, though, if we slap them in over here. You can see it has 19 strength requirement, 16 faith requirement. It's nothing, uh, it's not insane, but the fact is they still have some. The iron knuckles, are, they have higher strength scaling and can notably be infused with crushing, dragon, and blessed. Which is just to say again, strength scaling weapons, higher strength scaling naturally weapons can typically be infused. More strength scaling, fire, and blessed infusions. Moving on, we have Spears. This is just the way it was in the wiki. I made it a little bit closer to how it would be naturally, but Spears were next in the list. So Spears have mainly Dexterity Scaling. They are lightweight, which is to say four units or less. They are best one-handed, used behind a shield, 
with identical moveset two-handed. Everything is exactly the same one-handed to two-handed, so it's better to use them one-handed because it will take less stamina. You could, however, make it quality and then it will scale a little bit better with strength, and then when you two-hand it, it gets a little more of that, so... You could go for that, sometimes used instead of rapiers for a similar effect behind a shield. Spears are way more common behind a shield than other things are. With a couple of them notably being the Isterel, which scales incredibly well with faith and has high magic damage. It also raises your poison and plague resistance, which is a continuing trend of the blessed sort of weapons, all the ones you'll find in the uh, Valley of Defilement as it's called. The Scraping Spear is notorious for being able to break weapons and armor, it cannot be upgraded. Honestly not sure if I should use this in my next video, but I might try to use the blind instead. <laughs> we will see. Uh, the Short Spear and the Wing Spear are the more normal spears, and they can be infused and or buffed, probably with uh, Sharp, like we've been noting. Yep, Sharp, Mercury, but not Tearing this time. Instead we get Fatal, which is an interesting idea. Infuse a Spear with Fatal. It's very similar to how um, Rapiers are, huh? Interesting. So, there's, there's only four Spears, just these four. So, choose the one that you like, or why you like. The Isterel is probably the best choice, or the Scraping Spear. Moving on, we have poles. They're not called halberds, they're called poles. It's fun. Um, they're mainly strength scaling. They're lightweight, which is to say they are four units or less. Which is interesting how light they are. They are best two-handed for faster recovery and the strength boost. Sometimes used for the two-handed light attacks, which have decent range and speed. I'm not actually sure if you can infinite combo with them. But I believe I heard that before. I would have to experience it myself, I suppose. But uh, the Halberd, the Murden Hammer, and Warsythe are similar, except for their damage types. So all of them have very similar requirements. The Warsythe, however, is a bit lighter. And uh, the damage that they do at the start is all exactly the same. I didn't check their scaling as they go on, but all of them are exactly the same otherwise. Uh, the Murden Hammer, however, inflicts blunt damage, which typically is more effective against armor than other damage types, which is probably why more people do that. You can also put it to crushing, which might be something you can't do with the other halberds. Ah, no, you can do that with the basic halberd, and they are called poles. The phosphorescent pole definitely cannot be infused. But the war scythe, because it's dexterity, probably higher sharp. Yep, you can make it sharp. Tearing, Mercury, much like you can with any of those things, so the Murden Hammer is probably the better choice because it has blunt damage and you can infuse it with crushing. You can also do that with the Halberd, but the Halberd doesn't have blunt damage. So depending on what you feel like doing, I suppose, the Halberd does not do blunt damage. The Phosphorescent Pole majorly scales with Intelligence to deal high magic damage. It also has an MP regenerative effect. So if you wanted to use it two-handed, you could use it also in your offhand. If you had two of them, they have to specifically be different upgrades, or else you will not receive the boosted MP recovery. That's just how it is. You could also use it alongside a crescent-infused item, so that you didn't have to worry about that. But if you wanted to have the ultimate MP regeneration, you will have to use two phosphorescent poles of different upgrades, just to know. Just to know that that's how it works. Because upgrading it does increase the MP regeneration, I believe. I would have to check that again. I know it does it for the Crescent Infusion, so it probably does for the phosphorescent pole as well. Moving on, the War Scythe has higher dexterity scaling, and it inflicts slash damage type, which is not considerably amazing. However, because it has higher dexterity scaling, you can infuse it with Sharp, as we just checked. And it has, it's slightly lighter than the other poles. The other ones are 3.5. The War Scythe is 3. I believe the Phosphorescent Pole might be 4 units in weight. I would have to check again. We can check right now. We might as well. So our equipment burden is 5.5. We move to the Phosphorescent Pole. It moves to 6.5. So yes, Phosphorescent Pole is 4 units and the War Scythe is 3. Interesting. Um... Maybe if you meet the stat. 
I'm just checking this real quick. <laughs> no, is it really only just one MP per second, or is it just because it's not upgraded? It's not considered upgraded here? I'm not sure. Oh well. So the War Scythe is the dexterity hole, which is interesting, because none of the others are. Um, bows. Bows are very weird. Uh, you can actually use them effectively. They normally scale better with strength. That is to say, before you infuse them or anything, they are a pretty good strength weapon, which is weird. Um, they are very lightweight. That is to say, they are two units or less. Typically less. <laughs> I believe the white bow is actually 1.5 units, actually. There's a couple of them that are, like, very light. Like, 0 0.5 units. But none of them go over two units. Uh, they must be two-handed. You still get the two-handed boost to meet strength requirements. They're actually really strong when used on stealth builds with low health damage bonuses. Infusions change the weapon's scaling significantly, allowing them to be stronger as dexterity or quality weapons. The compound longbow is generally the strongest when infused with sticky. The sticky infusion. Not the quality, it's... Specifically, sticky is a bow infusion that increases their dexterity scaling dramatically. So the compound longbow is generally the strongest. When you infuse it with it. It also increases the range of the bow. So that's important. Uh, the lava bow is the next strongest one, which cannot be upgraded, but adds 100 fire damage to all arrows fired from it. So you can use it with fire arrows and get some pretty significant damage. And it's the strongest with low investment, which is to say because you cannot upgrade it, because it does not scale with anything really. Well, it does scale with strength and I believe intelligence a little bit, but the thing is you can't upgrade it, so it has very low requirements, I believe. And, like, because you would need dexterity for the compound longbow. The lava bow is easily the strongest with low investment. So if you were making a low-level character, you wanted to one-shot someone from a long range, you would want to use the lava bow. The white bow has really high requirements at 30 strength and, I believe, 25 dexterity. And it has really low scaling. It apparently gets small benefits from upgrading it, but it also has the longest range, making it somewhat more ideal at extremely long ranges, but I don't believe that those uh, distances are all that worth it. Range never really matters all that much in Souls games. It's particularly more important to just max out the damage of your ranged weapons, so... The white bow is generally not the strongest, but a lot of people keep thinking it might be a good idea because it has all these requirements, because it has this range, it's just, it really isn't. Compound longbow is always the one that comes out on top when you start testing. And people have tested this, it's a very old game. So. Moving on, we have crossbows. Crossbows normally have no scaling, they are mainly lightweight, which is to say, I believe, the heavy crossbow is 5 units. Uh, they are better one-handed to be able to use additional weapons. They can be two-handed to reach strength requirements. They are very low damage. Long recovery weapons that see almost no use because of that. None of them can be upgraded. They are not good. The phantom you see shooting you with one is cheating. It has its own scaling modifier that increases the damage to be able to one-shot you. Crossbows are not worth it. The Gargoyle Crossbow, however, has an amount of magic scaling to it with innate magic damage. It's still not very good because it only goes up to like twice the damage at maximum scaling, so it's really not beneficial, especially since no crossbows actually have any magic damage to them to go with that. Uh, the Heavy Crossbow is naturally the heaviest, I believe it's also the strongest, and... The light crossbow is the lightest by a small amount, which is to say the gargoyle crossbow is 0.5 units heavier. The light crossbow, however, is pure physical damage and therefore stronger. Um, the heavy crossbow is a little bit, like, 15 points stronger than the light crossbow. You're really not going to get a whole lot out of crossbows in this game. Uh, that's very unfortunate, but it is the truth. Uh, moving on, we have catalysts and talismans. There's only two talismans and there's only three catalysts. They uh, are majorly magic scaling, including the talismans. <laughs> the talisman of God is the only one that is purely purely faith scaling. So they are nearly weightless. I do not, I did not check the talismans, but I most of these are 0 0.5 units. So they are best one-handed in the offhand, 
so you can use them with other things. You know, you can use them to buff your weapon. You can use them in tandem without getting rid of your buff. <laughs> you know, you don't really want to use them in your main hand. But if you felt like it, like maybe you were a pure spellcaster, you wanted to use fire spray. You want the Marion blade in your offhand instead, just so that you know you don't have to think about swinging it properly because you can't. Could be a good idea to put it in your main hand in that situation, but otherwise you want it in your offhand because there's no uh, shield buffing spells. So. You must use them to cast magic with one exception because that one casts miracles and also this talisman of beasts can be used to cast both. So that is the one exception. But notable weapons, the insanity catalyst has a magic requirement unlike the other catalysts except for the talisman of beasts, but that's not a catalyst. So it also reduces maximum health by 50%. The Insanity Callus is truly insane because of this. Because you will have 25% health as an invader, so you probably don't want to do that, but it's generally considered the strongest catalyst. Normally, when one of these says it boosts the magic damage of your spells, it's lying, and it's just got a higher magic damage thing, so I am inclined not to believe whether that's actually the truth, but I didn't bother checking that because it is still considered the strongest catalyst otherwise. So moving on, we have Silver Catalyst, which increases your, max in your maximum mana points by 20% while equipped, which is to say if you put it away, you will lose that bonus and it, you will have to regenerate it again. So make sure you always have it out or put it on temporarily and then just admit that you're going to not care about it and just chomp on your spice and then use second chance and then put it away so the wooden catalyst is the best catalyst with no downsides that is very true however the talisman of beast is also the best catalyst with no downsides especially since you can use it to cast both magic and miracles and is often used to cast cursed weapon with less of a downside by not meeting the requirements of the talisman so if you're running a magic build, but you still want to have second chance, you can choose to not get the faith requirement of the Talisman of Beasts, and then when you're using Cursed Weapon, you will not take as much damage from its health depleting effect. Let me get rid of this one. I'm not sure if it was turning orange yet, but we're just going to get rid of that anyway. Um, the Talisman of Beasts can be used to cast Magic and Miracles, but as I said, you can choose not to meet one of the requirements so that when you use magic weapon it will give you the full benefit with much less of a downside instead it will only take one hit point away but people have been saying it doesn't give take away any hit points at all in the remake which is totally fair i don't really believe it matters too much especially since it would have given you away by doing damage to you from a distance so it really doesn't matter uh the talisman of god however is purely a miracle casting talisman that scales much better with faith. If you actually wanted to do damage with your talisman, you want to use Wrath of the Gods, you would want to use the Talisman of God. It is much stronger than a Talisman of Beasts if you are not meeting its requirements, especially the Talisman of God has a higher faith scaling. So the Talisman of God is typically the one you want to use if you want to hit people for big damage using Wrath of the Gods. However, it's not too far behind the Talisman of Beasts because the Talisman of Beasts is also getting magic scaling. So I believe it could catch up to it. I'm not completely sure about this. You'll have to test it for yourself or look it up. Magic. Magic is... Cursed Weapon. Cursed Weapon boosts a weapon's physical damage by 50%. As I have been saying, it lowers your health by 1% if you cast it properly. If you don't cast it properly by using the Talisman of Beasts while not meeting the stat requirements for it, then you will not take any damage whatsoever, and before you would take one hit point instead. Uh, death Cloud applies Plague buildup to an area. Fireball. Uh, uh, death Cloud, it, because Plague works much like it does... Uh, like Toxic does in Dark Souls games, it also lowers your uh, stamina recovery. However, it also lowers healing from uh, grass, so that's why Plague is such a problem. It lowers your healing, so... Fireball deals significant fire damage with a splash effect where it lands. It's very strong, it's actually very fun, I like it. Uh, fire Spray can be held to inflict fire damage for each projectile fired as long as you're holding it. 
So you can kind of tap it. It works much like Fire Surge, but it's more of a projectile. It's very strong. People can kind of just walk towards you with this, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. <laughs> However, they cannot run, so you can get away if you run away. So just remember that. Fire Spray, very dangerous. Uh, fire Storm inflicts massive damage, fi uh, fire damage over an area. And uh, it's very strong. It will one-shot you. Watch out. <laughs> Uh, homing Soul Arrow makes magic damage projectiles that fire at targets within range and can be delayed by facing away. It's very good as it always has been and always will be. Uh, Ignite deals massive close range fire damage, much like Combustion does. Except for it's a little bit faster, I believe. So if you're close up to a mage, watch out because they can one shot you at the click of their fingers. So Don't get hit by that. Uh, light Weapon is the magic version of Cursed Weapon. It adds magic damage to a weapon, much stronger than enchant weapon, which is one spell slot. Different from light weapon. The light weapon is much stronger. If you're using a blue blood blade build or even a butcher knife build, this is the magic buff that you need. A uh, poison cloud applies poison build up to an area. I believe poison also lowers healing effects, but I'm not sure about that. It also is way more useful in PvE because most PvE enemies are completely immune to plague and so Poison Cloud is much better at killing enemies without them noticing you. Uh, Relief is a magic spell that heals allies within range to full health. I don't know if this works as an invader on uh, PvE enemies and honestly I don't believe it's ever a good idea to try but I'm now theory crafting the idea that you could use it on the the uh, gray demon, the vanguard, the vanguard demon in uh, the first world of the storm area, the f world four one, because it's like a mini boss there. You could find mini bosses, you could heal them back up, and you probably have to be careful. It can probably hit you too. <laughs> I'm not sure, but. Before, you used to be able to hit enemies, and now you can't, so I don't know. Uh, I feel like maybe they're your allies now, and so you could heal them with relief, but it's just never going to come up, so don't don't plan around that. It's not a good idea. Uh, soul Arrow does magic damage with a projectile, while Soul Ray is similar. It's exactly the same, but has piercing effects, allowing to hit multiple enemies. also has much more damage behind it, so Soul Ray is just better Soul Arrow. Uh, soul Sucker is the spell that you can use to steal a soul level of whoever it hits and give the souls used for that level to the caster. It's very effective for de-leveling your friends so they can replan out their character, make it for PvP, all that good stuff. Otherwise, it will instantly one-shot things. Yay! It will instantly kill uh, NPCs. So don't think that you can just steal souls from an NPC. You will just straight up kill them. Uh, be careful. Uh, warding gives massive physical defense to the caster. I'm pretty sure it's 80%. Just completely ignore physical damage, so... Warding's very good. Uh, Water Veil is similar. It gives you fire defense. It's not a whole lot. It's not immensely boosting your fire defense, but... As I have said, Firestorm, Fireball, Fire Spray, Ignite. These are very strong. Water Veil kind of gives you defense against those, so... That's nice. That's nice. Water Veil exists. Uh, miracles! Uh, not as significant. Only one of them does damage. Uh, Anti-Magic Field adds a buff to the caster that causes an AoE where no one within the AoE can cast magic. Mir but Miracles still function. So you can still use God's Wrath even if someone's using Anti-Magic Field. And I say it's a buff to the caster because you can't also use it and Second Chance. You can't also use it and Regeneration, so... Important to know that. Uh, Banish, or Banishment, I believe it was, will kick invaders out of the world. If they are hit by it, you can roll through it, you can iframe it. It's difficult, but you can still do it. So it's important to note, it's very fun, very silly when you're doing a uh, playthrough where people are uh, aware of what you're doing, they're invading you on purpose, so you can pretend that you've captured them. Uh, this is an idea that Peeve did a couple times. He calls it Demon Mon. It's an idea. It's fun. Uh, God's Wrath is the only miracle that can deal direct damage and inflicts magic damage to a large area of effect, or AoE. 
So, God's Wrath is the only miracle that does damage. Miracles still function in anti-magic field. If you're trying to hit someone with a miracle and kill them, God's Wrath is definitely the way to go. Regeneration is powerful if the player can avoid getting one shot, so as I said, it doesn't stack with anti-magic field, doesn't stack with second chance. So if you can avoid getting one shot, it also doesn't stack with warding, by the way, uh, then regeneration is pretty strong because you can heal very quickly. So if you're using a shield, regeneration will very quickly restore any damage you t actually take through the shield. So that's where it shines the greatest. Uh, resurrection is typically considered not a good idea because what it does is it restores your allies to their body form. So while you're a host, you can use resurrection on a summon and it will kick them out of your world when it heals their body form. So that means someone who's doing co-op specifically to help you through the game, you instead say, no, I don't need your help, go back to your world. <laughs> But also, here's your body form. So now, in order to do co-op again, they have to go die, they have to put their sign back down. It's really just a waste of everyone's time, is what I would think. But the idea is that people will die, they're supposed to want to stay in body form, so they're trying to help people because instead of invading them, they can help people, and then they get their body form back. But it really just slows us all down because we're going to be staying in spirit form anyway, if we really didn't want to, uh... Because we know of the Black World tendency, where the game gets harder if you die in body form. So it's like, well, I'll just stay in spirit form the whole time so that never happens, and I'll just die in the Nexus so that I don't have to die in the area and make it go to Black World tendency so I can get all the White World events. So Resurrection really just isn't helpful for that formula when everyone is aware that they shouldn't be in body form if they want to do anything fun, so. Kicking someone out of your world by giving them their body back is not considered friendly or helpful to them in any way because of these things. So that is why resurrection is not so great. Uh, second chance is meta-defining, and it allows players to restore 50% of their health instead of dying. It's very helpful against one-shots and for glass cannon builds. So what that means is if you are running a Dragon Bone Smasher cursed weapon build, you can one-shot someone very easily with a backstab or maybe even sometimes a running attack while two-handed. And second chance will prevent them from getting one-shot. It will keep you from dying. It will just straight up allow you to do that. However, the downs... the unintended effect, or perhaps the intended effect of that, is that it also makes it a lot easier to stay at very low health, so that you can continue, and more easily, one-shot people using your Cursed Weapon Dragon Bone Smasher, but now you also have the Morion Blade and Clever Rat's Ring for a 140% damage bonus to your already 50% damage bonus of your now 2,000 damaging Dragon Bone Smasher. It's crazy. Um, so yeah. Or you could just use that on a magic build, do the same exact thing, but now you have fire spray and the opponent cannot dodge you. So there you go. Uh, moving on, we have shields. Shields are... parry or bash shields instead of small, medium, and great shields. So parrying shields are normally lightweight, with some being able to be used to block effectively, such as the dark silver shield. Uh, the bash shields are notably heavier, with some exceptions, but are very effective at blocking attacks, exception being spiked shield. So notable shields are the dark silver shield, which is essentially the best shield in the game. It increases magic defense, and it lowers the wielder's magic defense, which is to say, if you're going to use a magic build with the Dark Silver Shield, don't do that. It's a bad idea. You're lowering your own damage with magic spells. So it probably doesn't work if you're using Fire Spray. You could probably still do that if you're using Fire Spray, something like that. It also already 100% blocks physical and magical damage. This is one of the only times that FromSoft has made it so that... A shield completely blocks two things entirely, without any infusion or anything. Um, in Dark Souls 2, you can still do that by infusing things, but that means you're giving up your physical defense. So, this is the only time where you get both, for free. And also, you get defense. 
you get even more in case you weren't going to use the shield. You still get the magic defense, but you can't use it alongside spellcasting builds for the most part. So that is something, but that's only with magic spells. Fire spells probably still work just fine, so fire spells are generally considered the stronger of the ones unless you're using soul ray, which is still very good. It's still very good, it's just, it's not fire spray, it's not as cheap, it's not as rapid fire, so... You gotta think about it. The Slave's Shield, also known as the Dredgling Shield in the remake, because they didn't want to call it the Slave's Shield anymore, is the lightest parry shield. It really doesn't have anything else significant about it, but it is 0 0.5 units. It is the lightest shield in the game. I think it might even be 0 0.2. I would have to check again. It's very light. Um, the Rune Shield increases magic defenses with no downsides. The Dark Silver Shield, remember, it lowers your magic uh, damage. With spells, anyway. The Rune Shield doesn't do that. It just gives you magic defense. Pretty cool. You can still parry with it. You can parry with all of these. The Adjudicator Shield, however, is a Bash Shield. These ones are Bash Shields down here. That means you can hit people with it instead of being able to parry them. This one's also a great shield, considerably. It has the effect to regenerate hit points over time, and the effect is stronger when it is upgraded. Let's check really quickly how heavy it is. Um, so we're at 6.5, we are now at 6. The weapon we had was 4, so this is actually 3.5 units of weight. That is crazy to me. In fact, we can even take this off and it will prove to us that that is the truth. Yep, 3.5 units of weight. That's crazy because this is a great shield that people often use on their turtle builds. Their turtle builds specifically because it has the regenerate hit points effect. Because that stacks with all the other regenerate hit points effects, so it's crazy. But moving on, we have the large brushwood shield which can completely block fire and physical damage. It's also not the heaviest great shield, it only has 13 units of weight to it, as you can see here. It completely blocks magic, uh, physical and fire damage. So, we were talking about how fire doesn't really get defensive options. This would probably be why you can use the large brushwood shield and just block it entirely and not care whatsoever. It probably was the way to go if you wanted to survive some, fire st some running firestorm builds back in the day. But of course, there was dead angling back then, so... I think there's still dead angling, I'm, I'm not completely sure about that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the spiked shield is actually meant to be used as a weapon. You can infuse it with sharp instead of dark, like all these other ones. And it can still be parried, but the fact remains, this is a shield. You can block while attacking with it, and it's able to be infused with sharp, which means it has higher dexterity scaling, and it's supposed to be used as a weapon. It's... It's an interesting thing. They actually included that and they wanted you to do it. They don't normally do that. They're usually like, yeah, you can do it if you feel like it. It's like, no, no, here's a shield specifically for the idea of using a shield as a weapon. And that's what the spike shield is. So, It's also pretty light. I think it's three units. Uh, the tower shield is the heaviest and sturdiest shield. It weighs 30 units, making it one of the heaviest things in the game next to the brand. The tower shield has the highest stability at 70. The only reason to use it over the Dark Silver Shield is because it has higher stability. Other than that, the Dark Silver Shield actually still beats it completely. Two were. <laughs> As you can see, it gives you pretty high defenses of 90 in fire. 60 in magic. It's guard break, as you see, it says 85. You probably can't see that, so I'll read it. It says 85, but when it's unupgraded, it's at 70. So, it's not 100 in physical and magical, like the Dark Silver Shield is, but it is 100 in physical and in f it has 90 in fire. So, the large brushwood shield is still better at it at that by a little bit, but it also has some pretty high magic defense as well. The thing is, the Dark Silver Shield has 100 in physical, 100 in magical, it increases your magic defense, and it also has 70 in fire defense. So, the Dark Silver Shield is just the best shield, unless you specifically are just using a shield to block things, in which case this has the highest guard break, or stability, in the game.
You are never breaking the shield's guard. But that doesn't matter because the blind doesn't care. The large sword of moonlight doesn't care. And the shodel only cares a little bit. So those things can all hit through it. So that is it for Demon Souls. I apologize that I do not know literally everything about Demon Souls. I didn't know that those weapons could not be upgraded, for one, and I didn't know the shodel was in the game, so <laughs> I figured these things out today, I made it all today, and it's going up in like an hour, so. Thank you for watching this. This is the final video on the uh, How to Build Around Weapons series, and I can finally get back to invading without feeling guilty about not working on this, so. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned a few new things, and that will be it from me for a while, except for in the next video, I'm going to have to talk to you again, so goodbye.